really important to prepare ourselves for uh, the situations that can happen because to win this race, this means taking risks. When young engineers join the fraternity of a solar car team, it's just the beginning of an unforeseeable yet life-changing journey. A commitment that begins as a choice grows into an obsession. And when their ideas face not only fierce competition, but the reality checks of Mother Nature, their bond grows with the struggle. And their will becomes even more consumed with the desire to win. That night was very, very tough. It was a lot of wind, it was a lot of sand. It was a thunderstorm out of nowhere, lightning strikes. And then in the meantime, we still had to fix the car. So we set up a makeshift workshop with wooden crates and everything, and then we fixed the car in the middle of nowhere. It was tough, but... Yeah, we pushed through. It's challenges like these that can either break a team or bring them even closer together. In the middle of the night, I woke up with a tendon right in my face. Like everything was blown to pieces. So I ran out, started helping here, getting the, the tents back in, <laughs> getting all the, the stuff to the, the truck. It's an adventure. I mean, in 60 years, we can talk to our children and say, ah, oh, we've had that and sandstorms and everything. So I thought it was quite cool. Now, as we get into South Australia, the wind is picking up because there are fewer and fewer trees. Without that coverage, well, the winds can whip up to incredible speeds here and fly across the roads. That can cause solar cars to spin around, lose their bearings, and maybe ruin some of their delicate mechanics. The journey in and out of the next control stop, Cooper Pedy, is a few hundred kilometers of notoriously treacherous road for this race. And climate change has only made these winds stronger and more dangerous. The section around Cooper Pedy is very difficult as there is a lot of side winds and our light solar cars are very sensitive to those side winds as they get blown away. And the pilot has to constantly work on his steering wheel to keep the car going straight. All right, can I be okay? Okay. Starting off the day, we'll be fighting some pretty high headwinds from Cooper P to Glendambo. That's the next two control stops. The boiler models are all predicting 50 km an hour winds, so it drains the battery because you're fighting through the wind, and the other thing is it makes uh, steering very, very difficult. Plus, you'll have gusts from side to side, road trains, so it will be a really difficult day. In spite of the harsh conditions, last year's champions, Vattenfall, are on the attack. Uh, yesterday, we were 22, 23 minutes behind Twente. And now we're only three minutes behind, so uh, we made up for a lot of the time. And I think we'll be able to overtake 20 today. We've got a couple of drivers that are really good with driving with big winds. So we hope they will uh, sort us out today and we can go as fast as we want to. For three days straight, Solar Team 20 from the Netherlands has held on to the lead, an impressive accomplishment. But with Vattenfall right on their tail, things may be about to change. So yesterday was kind of a hectic day. So like we had some issues with our solar panel that was clapping uh, open because of the wind. But we fixed it overnight, made sure it will not happen again. But I have no clue how it will go uh, today and how the weather will play out. And while two formidable Dutch teams are still leading the pack, 
Team Tokai are convinced that their bullet design is far superior for handling strong winds than the catamarans out front. Today is the day to make their move. Design is not for straight wind, not, uh, but also for the side wind. So the effect is smaller than other teams, I think. Using complex fluid dynamic simulations, Tokai designed a vehicle shaped like a dart, the majority of the weight up front, and a rear that forms a cross. Like a dart, their car actually gets more stable the faster it goes. Increasing stability further, Tokai carefully shaped the shoulder of the car to direct crosswinds down and back. It's an ingenious design. Meanwhile, Team Agoria has developed a completely different solution. We also have a system built into our car, which is called crabbing. And for crabbing, we turn the car sideways. By using four-wheel steering, Agoria is able to turn their car into the wind and thus greatly reduce drag and lateral force. This helps us reduce air resistance. So when there is a side wind, we can tilt the car and then it catches that side wind and then the aerodynamic air resistance is reduced. It's the only competitor from Germany in this uh, challenger class. It's our goal to take on the Dutch, as we say, in our team. So we need to show that we are able to finish the challenge and show all the others that we can take on the Dutch. Entering the notoriously dangerous stretch of road before Cooper Pedy, Twente is well aware that their competition is gunning for them. Today will be a very important day because it will be very tense at the finish. It's just this close and you're just hoping the strategy plays out well. Because the teams are so close, teams are less eager to slow down because of safety. I think somebody will make a mistake. Yeah? Making a mistake with these kinds of side winds can become dangerous. While pushing hard to keep their lead, Twente is harshly confronted by the outback, and it costs them dearly. It's really windy here, and our driver, he was doing a great job keeping the car on the road, but suddenly there was one wind strike more heavier than the rest, and he lost grip with his tires, and then he arrived here. It was so hard to see your car, and it was, uh, yeah, sort of gone. It was upside down. It didn't, it didn't drive anymore. After dominating the race for three and a half days, Team Twente is out of the World Solar Challenge. Everyone is okay. Our driver is okay. So that's that. I'm very happy with that. That that's the first thing that was important. Yeah, everyone is okay. As the emotional shock of their crash sets in. The defending champions, Vattenfall, pass them by, moving them into the lead. It's like life's work for last year, and then it's gone. It's so sad, yeah. by uh, Zorg Team Twente, who were in the lead in the race, and they were on the side of the road and pretty far off, so I think they were just blown off the road and landed in the side. I hope their driver is fine, but it looks really bad. It's great for us that we can overtake them because we've lost the competitor, but it feels terrible at the same time. We want to win, but we want to win by being the best, not by, by having the other ones being blown off the road. Cooper Petey, not to be underestimated. After about an hour on the road, everyone is still battling the wind, just trying to make it into the control stop at Cooper Pedy in one piece. Jesus. We see the car being a bit, well, imperfect uh, or in, imbalanced on the road. The danger of the race is all the factors combined. So you have the speed of those cars, they go fast. You have the wind. You have some small tornadoes also that can pass the roads. You have the roadways, incoming traffic, a lot of animals. 
It's a long route and you have to be focused every minute of the race. As the day wears on, the wind continues to build, with gusts reaching up to 80 kilometers per hour. The aerodynamics of the German team's bullet design is serving them well, but it may have its limits. Und habe auch erst im, im Nachhinein so realisiert, als, ich, als wir den Crash hatten, habe ich halt erst daran gedacht, scheiße, wir waren schon Vierter, wir haben alles so, so gut gemacht, zwei Jahre, das gesamte Team. As Sonnenwagen's driver steers into 50 km per hour crosswinds, the road train suddenly cuts off the wind and then creates a turbulent wake behind it, sucking the solar car into its draft. It rolls multiple times before coming to rest upside down. I didn't have any injury, but uh, it could have been much worse than that. So uh, I, I'd like to uh, thank my, my colleagues for building such a safe car. Also das Fahrwerk, das Mono, Elektrik, Batterie ist alle Teile. Es hat nur die Außenhüllung, die hier komplett kaputt. Die Windschutzscheibe ist kaputt, der Windkettung hier oben ist kaputt. Drei Radkästen sind kaputt. Die Suppenschüsse sind alle heile. Ich schätze, dass, dass, dass es deutlich, deutlich, deutlich schlimmer sein könnte. Auf geht's, mach mal. Mach mal das mal an, ja. Wir haben ein bisschen gebraucht, um uns zu sammeln und haben jetzt ähm, die Motivation und den Willen, die Karre wieder auf die Straße zu bringen. Ähm, wir können relativ viel mit Tape machen. Das ist alles, was los ist, kommt jetzt raus. Weil die Solarzellen scheinen zack zu sein. Das ist ein bisschen Kosmetik außen. Chances look pretty slim that the German team can get their car back on the road. It is in rough shape. But one has to respect their tenacity. Cooper Pedy. This is a mining town. This is where a lot of Australia's opal comes from. It is cold, it is windy, and the last hundred kilometers of this race have been incredibly treacherous. We're now about 800 kilometers from the finish line. Defending champions Vattenfall have taken the lead following Twente's crash, and they've been here for 20 minutes already. What is that like to drive in that vehicle in this wind? What does it feel like? I feel the wind definitely. Um, I'm happy with the way the car drives currently. We're relatively stable. Um, so it's, it's, we can keep it on the road, that's fine. Um, it just requires concentration at all times. Is there any fear about, you know, flipping or going off the road? Well, yes, if you see your nearest competitor go. And that's something you never want to see. That's not the way you want any solar event to go. No, exactly. Well, well then getting into the Thanks. checkpoint. There goes Team Vattenfall. They are the first team to depart Cooper PD. In fact, they had the entire control stop to themselves. 50 minutes back, now running second, is Agoria. Then Tokai from Japan and the University of Michigan. Seven and a half hours behind the leader, Sonnenwagen arrives at Cooper Pedy.
with a car being held together by duct tape and pure resilience. Even though we had this accident, we were able to, uh, to go on. Uh, they assessed the damage and they fixed it very quickly. We're very lucky that nothing happened. That's uh, fortunate that everyone is, is fine. We always have to remind ourselves, this is a dangerous competition. But what we want to achieve is the message that sustainable technologies and the new ones that, that help fight climate change, that they get attention and that uh, they develop even more. And we want to show what's possible already. And I hope, <laughs> uh, yeah, that this, this, this message is uh, being, being delivered. With the lead teams back on the wind-blown highway, the race has made a bold move for safety. The race has really changed. Because of this crazy weather and all of the wind, well, the race officials have actually declared that all solar cars must go under 80 kilometers per hour. And that was maybe precipitated by the rollover of Twente that happened earlier today, and also the team Sonnenwagen. This hurts us uh, in a big way. We actually performed very well in the high winds. The car was designed for it. By complying with the lower speed limit, teams' positions in the race are effectively on hold. This helps the, the leading cars in front of us, which are catamarans, and they're you know, very unstable in the wind. This also helps uh, some of the slower cars behind us. Now, instead of falling further and further behind, they're able to just sort of keep their position locked behind us. Yeah, so we're headed towards Glendembo now. That's the place where the second patrol stop will be. And that's uh, second to last. Like Tokai, Agoria feels their car is very capable in the wind, and the speed limit is actually hurting their chances of catching Vattenfall. Taking charge, Agoria sends their advance crew to the next control stop to make a case to the race officials. Faculty has uh, imposed an 80 kph limit. The thing is, we have footage from our car which shows that it's stable and it's designed to be able to to drive in, in severe crosswinds. This is basically at 80 kilometers an hour. And we just know we can, we can go faster while driving safely. Hi, Dan. Uh, this is Paul. Agoria. Um, apparently, they've spoken with some people that said this uh, 80 kph speed limit is going to be reviewed. Have you heard any news about that? All right, speed restriction has been taken off. It's free for all. Yes. All right. OK, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Great. Let's cheese them. The speed limit was in force for a full two hours. Definitely an opportunity lost for teams that felt it took away their competitive advantage. But now, the gloves are off. Here in Glendombo, I am expecting the first vehicle to roll in here very shortly. It is the team Vattenfall. This team has run a pretty incredible strategic race. Having won this event seven of the last nine times they've competed, Vattenfall knows to stick to their strategy and take advantage of other teams' mistakes. When Twente went off the road, they were able to pass by and take over what seems to be a sizable and potentially insurmountable lead. From here on out, there's only several hundred kilometers into Adelaide, so it's their race to lose. Remarkably, even with a section of speed restriction, Agoria has cut their gap in half since the last control stop to just 23 minutes behind Vattenfall. This race may not be over yet. With a mum. That was closing a lot of ground, like on one leg. So if you can do that again the next leg, then we'll be head to head. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> How is the Takai car holding up today? Oh, it's holding up great. Our car was designed for these kinds of conditions. Fukuda Sensei is the aerodynamics professor, so this was all designed for. And then unfortunately we had to 
we had to slow it down and lose our advantage, but this was the sector where we were going to overtake the leaders. So now you can make up some more time on the next leg. Yes, yeah, so now we've increased the pace. Yes. Fantastic. With no imposed speed limits, the top teams are in a sprint to make the next control stop, Port Augusta, before the day's end at 5 p.m. And it is 289 kilometers away. Hopefully we pass the Fun Buffalo tonight, and if not, then we'll get them tomorrow. But also the solar car behind us, Tokai, they're uh, hunting us down as well. This competition is a blend of the endurance and the excitement. It's putting yourself to the test. Those long hours of having to pay attention and do everything right. You know, a gust of wind comes by or there's a mechanical problem. It's a lot of mental focus to stay alert and to be ready to operate at a very high level all at once. Anything goes wrong, you need to be able to do whatever's right for the car. I am here at Port Augusta, the ninth and last control stop of this entire solar challenge. After this, it's straight through to the finish line in Adelaide. Now, it's nearly the end of day four, and momentarily, we are expecting the arrival of the Vattenfall car. The real question, what I want to see here, is how close behind them is Agoria. Looking at the time that it is now, at nearly 20 to 5, looks like both of those cars may end their day here at this control stop. This is way faster than I was expecting. Agoria is in right on the heels of Vattenfall. Seven minutes separating these two teams. The last control stop, it was more like 23. That is remarkable. This team is pulling back time in a serious way. Whoa, 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 watch out, watch out. Whew. The Vattenfall car, just being pushed by the wind, rolled off its moorings and started rolling backwards. Now, none of the team members are allowed to touch that vehicle or they have to start that timer again. Team Agoria has already arrived. So everyone was running trying to throw rocks and little bits of matter underneath it just to stop the car from rolling away. This is incredible. Agoria has witnessed this entire moment and feels the defending champions have violated the rules. In turn, they have filed a protest. Even though no one physically touched the car, they still feel the rules were broken. The rule only says during the control stop, the pilot has to do all the handling. Nobody can touch anything. And everything that he's using must be part of the car. So if that cone was a part of the car that has been carried all the way, then it would be fine as long as the pilot did it. Right, but that's not what happened. Team Tokai has just made it in the nick of time. Since all control stop periods must be served during official race hours, they will have to take their 30-minute stop down before leaving in the morning. Tomorrow morning will be a full tilt sprint to the Adelaide finish line. Race officials have agreed with Agoria's protest and docked Vattenfall a five-minute penalty. That means the top two teams will be departing here only two and a half minutes apart the closest in race history. Yeah, tomorrow uh, <laughs> it's full attack for the, for the win. It's, now we are so close, we have to do it. Tomorrow, one team will be crowned champion of the World Solar Challenge. Will the Dutch team Vattenfall hang on and become champions for the eighth time? Will the Belgian team Agoria finally break their streak of bad luck and claim their first victory? Or will the ultra-disciplined Team Tokai, who have been relentlessly gaining on the leaders since day one, finally catch them both and take home the trophy?